Welcome back to Trucks and Junk. Today on part six of the Junkyard Golf Cart Build, we're going to blow this thing apart, do all the final welds, do the minor little adjustments we need to do from all the test driving we did. It did well on the test driving. The only issue I ha really had with this thing is it had trouble pulling more than two people just because of where I placed the axle. It did fine pulling power wise, but it just, it was horrible turning because that axle was too far forward. And it was lifting the front end up every time somebody sat on the back. So it made it really hard to steer. But we're going to make that adjustment. We're also going to definitely know that we need to make a thicker seat now because that really didn't hold up. It broke like three times. That was horrible. And I also need to put a longer throttle cable on it because the throttle cable that I've got on there is so short. It, it just, every time the engine kind of rocked or moved, it was kind of idling the engine up. So that's something I have to address. And I might even put a bigger carburetor on it. So stay tuned. That's what we're going to do today. Let's get it done. Dinosaurs! Okay, this is what I'm talking about with the axle. So basically, you can see where this axle is sitting on this leaf spring. The center of the leaf spring is all the way back here where the bolt is. So I need to make it to where this axle right here is in line with where this bolt is. Because where it's so far forward, I think it's giving it so much extra leverage on the front of the golf cart to lift it up. And then, the only way I can think of really doing that without messing with the chain adjustment and everything is to basically raise this golf cart another inch to where I can bring all of this underneath this tub. And then I can also put my trailer hitch to this frame. So when I'm pulling the trailer, it's only pulling on that frame. It's not pulling on the body of the golf cart. And then like I was talking about with the throttle cable, is you can see where it's just so short right here. There's not much room for it to travel. So every time this engine rocked up or whatever it did, it would pull on this cable because it's so short and even bent the top of the carburetor. So I'm definitely got to put a longer throttle cable on it. The only thing is I might run into an issue is the shifter with moving all this back. So. But we're gonna see how it works. I mean, that's that's what we do, so let's do it.
And now you guys see why it's important to make these facers with a piece of pipe instead of these nuts. It would make this so much easier to take this brake caliber off. But it's still doable. Okay guys, so as you can tell, I made this super easy to be able to take apart, which is awesome. Because if I have any issues with it, it's so easy to fix. That's what it looks like outside the cart. Weird looking and contraction, ain't it? But you can see where I did my motor mounts. Right there. Very simple. Like I said, I still need to fix this. And now that it's out of the cart, it should be a lot easier to do. Drill the hole up here so I can be able to drain the oil out of the engine. And now we're just going to final weld this thing solid and then figure out a way to move this axle back. Which, like I said, I'm just going to probably drill a hole here right above the axles. Right here. And right here. And then put a one inch piece of square tubing on there on both of them. And then I'll probably put weld a drop down right here. It's one inches dropping down from here and then bring it out as far as I moved it back and then drill a hole through that. That's my plan. Hopefully it works out. But like I said, I might have issues with this shifter. I know it'll move back with the engine. So there won't be an issue there. But my issue is, will I have enough room to pull back everywhere I need to pull and push forward everywhere I need to pull? Or do I need to make a bend in it to bring it back where it was? I don't know yet. I guess we'll see. Let's see what we got to do. Okay, this is what I figured out. I realized I could probably do this a lot easier than what I thought. So, these slotted out holes are in the same spot on both sides, which is perfect. Because all I really got to do is take these off, swap the two sides to where these holes will be in the front instead of the back. Which will make this a whole lot easier. All I got to do is drill new holes here, and that should be fine. So that's what we're going to do now. And then we can put this back under the cart and then figure out what I'm going to need to do up here. Because that'll tell me how far back it's going to be. So, and then we'll be able to figure out what we're going to do up here. That'll take care of my axle issue. And then all I have left to do is to figure out the shifter issue, which will be fine. I, I mean, I made the shifter, so I'm pretty sure I can modify it. And then. That should fix our whole picking the front end up when we turn with three people. Alright, so now that I ground down the bottom of these to match the other side, these holes actually still line up, just to different holes. 
So I'm still good. I don't even have to drill new holes. So this is perfect. All I got to do is rebolt these down. Just flip the two sides. So that's awesome. Like I said, that'll work out good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side because I think it's gonna be repetitive otherwise. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side just the same way I did that side. I'm gonna roll this thing back underneath here and see what we're gonna have to do for the front side of it. So see y'all in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna roll back under here, see what we got. Okay, now that we have this back underneath the cart, this is what I was talking about. See how this bolt is literally right above the axle now. Instead of being all the way up here, the axle being all the way up here now, it's right above the axle. And what I'm gonna use to space this out for one inch is I've got a couple of these lug nuts off an old uh, dually truck. It's got this big spacer on the bottom and they're exactly one inch thick, so it's perfect to space these up one inch. So I put them between the leaf spring and the plate right there, upside down to where the spacer can put a lot of pressure on the leaf spring. So that raised it up an inch so I can have this space underneath the tub and in between this plate where when we bounce and jump, they don't touch. So we're good. Now I just got to come up with a plate to weld to there to bring it out to where that can still bolt in. Just a nice little life hack for you. Use these uh, wood clamps as a kickstand to be able to hold things up because you can adjust the level. So perfect. All right. So what I got to go here is I've got this piece of C-channel that we cut off when we were making the frame. And it's just about the right length for us to be able to basically put that in place underneath of it and drill that hole out a little bit bigger to be able to put that ball joint through it. But what I plan on is I'm going to slit it here. And I'm going to slit it on the other side as well, right here, to where that slit can slide over top of this. That way I can weld here, here, across here, here, there, and on the bottom, and make that super strong. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, splitting it. So I cut a slit on both sides of it, right there. And now I can just slide this over top what's already there and now I got a whole bunch of weld points and it's going to be super strong so what we're going to do now is we're going to get this adjusted to where it needs to be right in the center of the cart and I'm going to weld it in so
extended. So now that we've got that, we'll go ahead and take this all back apart now and start doing my final welds. And then we'll figure out the shifter once this is all back together. I think it's going to do just fine. Okay, we got plenty of space there now. Back there. We're, we can jump on this thing and it should be fine. And then it's connected there. So now we figured out our axle issue. And like I said, you can definitely tell. It's back a lot more than it was. The tire used to be all the way up here close to the curve. So it's sitting more like it should. And it's not really that much higher than it was. An inch really didn't make that much of a difference, I don't think. But you guys still let me know, should I go back with the original golf cart tires or keep these things on there? Y'all tell me. All right, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get to doing these final welds. Okay, now that we got all that stuff apart and figured out how to move our axle back and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and do all these final welds on this thing. That way we can make this thing stronger now that we know that this thing will run and drive out in the field like it's supposed to. So We're just going to make it stronger now with all these final welds and then hopefully get this thing back together for you. Let's do it. Okay, now that I got this thing all final welded back together, I wish I had enough time this evening to go ahead and put it back in the cart for you and put everything back together, but unfortunately we're running out of time today. Um, I do have a new longer throttle cable ordered, so tune in next week and we will 
put this thing back in the cart, put everything back together, put the new longer throttle cable on it, figure out what we're going to do with the shifter. I don't think it'll be too bad, but that's what we'll do next week. And we'll take this thing for another ride just to make sure it fixed all of our issues before we start doing lights, radio and painting this thing. So I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. And we'll see you next week. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble